Hi everyone! Today we're going to be learning how to identify oak trees by their acorns. And in case you didn't know, all oak trees are members of the genus Quercus and they all produce acorns. Now I've gathered seven acorns from seven different species of oak trees for us to look at today. And I hope you find this video educational and useful. To kick things off, let's separate our acorns into two groups. First we have our red oaks, which are generally smaller and lighter acorns. Then we have white oaks, which are larger and have heavier acorns. Let's talk about a few more distinguishing traits of red and white oaks before we get too deep into our acorn identification. So white oaks produce leaves that have a smooth margin, and they generally have acorns that take only one season to develop. Now those acorns typically germinate shortly after falling off the tree. Whereas red oaks produce leaves that have bristle tips, as well as acorns that take two seasons to grow instead of one. Also, their acorns typically germinate the following spring after falling from the tree. Acorns in general are extremely valuable food sources for wildlife. However, the acorns of white oaks are generally preferred by animals because they are less bitter due to containing less of these chemical compounds called tannins. These chemical compounds not only make the acorns bitter, but they also make them more difficult to digest. Now, red oaks may be higher in tannins, but they're also higher in protein, fiber, fat, and calories. But that may not make up for the fact that they're harder to digest and don't taste as good. As a little fun fact, oak trees are known to regulate how many acorns they produce each year, and they'll sync up with their neighboring oak trees so that they're all on the same acorn production schedule. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy of an acorn, which is actually a pretty simple one. So at the top, there is a stalk where it attaches to the stem. Then there's a cupule or a cap of scales, and this cap is protecting the precious nut. And at the very bottom of the acorn is actually what remains of the style of the female flower. All righty, we can go ahead and start with our acorn identification, and we can do so by starting with our white oak group. So here's our first acorn, which is the namesake of the group, the white oak, otherwise known as Quercus alba. A few different features can be used to identify acorns, mainly the size of the nut, the amount of the nut that's covered by the acorn cap, the type of scales that make up the acorn cap, and the overall color of the acorn. So the white oak group has scales on their cap that don't overlap, but they'll stick out a little bit. You can see that this white oak's cap in particular appears very wordy or bumpy and covers about a fourth of the nut. The nut itself is oblong or egg-shaped and should be about one inch long, which this one appears to be about there. Our next member of the white oak group is Bur oak or Quercus macrocarpa, which has gigantic acorns. They're about one and a half inches long. I think this one is actually slightly bigger than that. And just look at the size of this acorn versus our white oak acorn. It's absolutely gigantic. Anyway, the nut is covered at least halfway by a wordy cap that has a bit of fringe at the bottom. The fringe is a bit difficult to see now, but when these acorns first come up, the amount of fringe is insane and these acorns look really wacky. Okay, our third member of the white oak group is the chinkapin oak otherwise known as Quercus muhlenbergi, which is in fact a tongue twister. The cap of this acorn has wordy scales, but the bumps aren't as prominent as those on white oak. Its cap typically covers about a third of the nut, but this is not the nut's original cap, so it doesn't reach that quota. Now, the nut of chinkapin oak is a lot darker than other species, and it should be about a half inch to one inch long, which this one is about one inch long. All right, here is our last white oak group acorn, which is swamp white oak or Quercus bicolor. The scales on the cap of this species are warty, but the warts are a tad spiky, so it would hurt if you just chucked it at someone. Anyway, the cap covers about a third of the nut and is about one inch long in tan. Now moving on to the red oak group, we have the namesake for this group, which is northern red oak or Quercus rubra. Now, unlike members of the white oak group, members of the red oak group have scales on their cap that overlap. You can see that northern red oak has really small overlapping scales that have rounded edges. The cap on this acorn is flat and is meant to cover about a fourth or less of the nut. So it should be like a hat on the nut, which it does exactly that. The nut itself is almost round and about three fourths to one inch long. Okay, the next member of the red oak group is the shingle oak, otherwise known as Quercus imbricaria. 
This acorn looks quite similar to red oak, but much smaller. Shingle oak's acorn cap is also more bowl-shaped, covering about a third to one half of the nut, which is about five-eighths of an inch long. Alrighty, here is our last member of the red oak group and is the smallest of all our acorns today. This acorn belongs to pin oak or Quercus palustris. The nut of this acorn is very round and about half an inch long. However, the cap is pretty flat with reddish brown scales. And you know what? Let's just for fun compare the size of this acorn next to our burr oak acorn, which is the largest one in this video. And wow, the size difference is ridiculous. You can really see how true it is that red oaks produce smaller acorns and white oaks produce larger acorns. Alrighty, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning how to identify oak trees by their acorns. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in my next video.